A manager, sir, his phone is encased. I think he will join. Uh, we will begin in two minutes. We are waiting for our principal to join. Sure, sure. <clears throat> Hello. Can you Hi. hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Man, uh, Prince has joined. Thank you. 
hello dr david matthew good to see yeah. you thank you we missed you last time aha <laughs> Uh, shall we begin waiting for manager also to join but i think he will be uh, the the thing is connecting only sir can you can you see me yes, my video yes 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 i cannot see video. i mean i cannot see my video that sir you can start sir you can start no problem start meduna okay ma'am start Yes. Welcome to all dignitaries, guests, and delegates. With great joy and immense exultation, I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all presented here for the Union Christian College Centenary Webinar Lecture Series 2020 and 2021. Dear participants, please follow the instructions during the webinar. Be sure to mute your audio so that there is no disturbance. during the end of session just a little housekeeping before we get started if you have any questions during the presentation please type them into the chat box in your zoom or youtube control panel we will bring them up during the presentation and we will also have a discussion of those questions and the feedback form of the webinar only available at the very end of the session today we are presenting molecular dynamic simulations in computer aided drug discovery which is presented by dr meenakshi sundaram balasubramanian is an assistant professor and an inglewood scholar department of geriatrics the north institute of aging university of arkansas for medical sciences usa we also have other dignitaries professor k ip worghi sir University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences (ARU USA) is one of the board of directors UC College Alumni Association of North America. Dr. David Sir Matthew David Sir Matthew Sir, a principal Union Christian College Alva, Reverend Father Thomas John, managing director Union Christian College Alva, and all the dear faculty members and all other active participants, the Department of Biosciences UC College welcomes you. all to the webinar molecular dynamic simulations in computer aided drug discovery which is organized by the department of biosciences uc college alva in association with uc college alumni association of north america molecular dynamic simulations is a computational method for predicting and analyzing the three dimensional structure of macromolecules md simulations plays a vital role in biomedical research when experimental techniques are expensive and or labor intensive our recent work demonstrates the usefulness of md simulations in drug discovery research a thiazolidinone drug tdz8 is a non atp competitive inhibitor targeting gsk3 beta which demonstrated efficacy against multiple diseases however no experimental data or models define the binding mode of tdz8 with gsk3 beta which chiefly reflects our lack of an established inactive confirmation for this protein using a metadynamic simulation 
we predicted the inactive conformation GSK3 beta and then predicted that TEDs are the eight binding mode. Our, our predicted conformation of GSK3 beta will serve as a starting material for identifying potent and tailor by non ATP competitive inhibitors against GSK3 beta. So without any further delays, we may step into the inaugural session. It is a mark of our undenying tradition to invoke the Almighty at the beginning of an important event. Like the great philosopher once said, the function of prayer is not to influence God, but rather to change the nature of one who prays. Let's evoke the Almighty. I would like to invite you. World, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made his heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I would like to invite Mr. Shyam Mohan, sir, head of the Department of Biosciences, UC College, to formally welcome the gathering. Good evening to everybody in India and good morning to all in the USA and from the parts of North America. Today, uh, on October 31st, uh, is yet another important day, uh, landmark day in the Department of Biosciences calendar, because uh, today we are hosting a seminar by Dr. Meenakshi Sundaram Balasubramaniam on molecular dynamics in computer-aided drug discovery. So the month of October had been very busy. We have been scheduling seminars and we had participants from all over India and abroad who have witnessed the series of seminars that we have organized and we, and we are thankful that we have had good responses from everybody. So today, in this on this occasion, uh, my job is to welcome all the dignitaries and the speaker for the day. Uh, so I start off with uh, first, in, uh, first I would like to introduce and welcome Dr. David Sarge Matthew, sir, who is not only the principal of the college, but before that he used to be the coordinator of the bioinformatics department. So it's quite a, uh, well, has, quite, has quite a good idea about how computer-aided drug, drug design works. And uh, initially, when the course was introduced, we were at the crawling stages of uh, understanding bioinformatics. At that point of time itself, uh, computer-aided drug discovery had uh, made leaps. So we had uh, the uh, I had the opportunity to be along with uh, David sir, and both of us uh, were instrumental in delivering uh, computer-aided drug discovery modules, courses, training, etc., for the beginning batches of uh, bioinformatics. I would like to welcome uh, Dr. David Sarge Matthew sir today as the principal and uh, as the person who will inaugurate the seminar. Uh, welcome, David, sir, to this function. Secondly, I would like to welcome the manager, Reverend Thomas John Achin, who has not yet joined, uh, but uh, he is always blessing us, and uh, he's all he was also a part of our seminar last week, and uh, so uh, had been there throughout the program, so he gives the right kind of motivation and also helps us uh, to deliver the best. So uh, I welcome Reverend Thomas John Achin in his absence also to this program. Next, I would like to welcome Dr. Kotai Light Vergisser. Vergisser was here last year. He himself is a pioneer in the fields of uh, molecular uh, drug discovery and uh, computer-aided drug design. We have had uh, discourses and interactions during the brief stint that he was there in UC College in last October. And uh, we continue to hope, uh, we continue that, uh, we hope to continue the association with Dr. Kotai Light Vergisser 
and with the Association of Old Students in North America. And uh, thank you, sir, for being here and welcome, uh, Vergi, sir, to this program. Next, I would like to welcome Dr. Susan Epen, ma'am, who is uh, helping us to organize programs and uh, by bringing the best speakers from the world and uh, as well as from India. And we've had a lot of programs in which uh, she had ha had the, uh, enabled us to have, where we had speakers from various fields uh, throughout the year, throughout this year and last year as well. And uh, Dr. Susan Epen, ma'am, has been a constant figure in all our seminars. And uh, thanks for motivating us. And I welcome Susan, Dr. Susan Eepen to this program. Next, I would like to welcome the special invitee, Dr. Meenakshi Sundaram Balasubramaniam, sir. Uh, sir, uh, welcome you to this program. And students are eager to learn from you the basics of drug discovery. And uh, we have students from the undergraduate and postgraduate level of uh, biotechnology and bioinformatics. So I think it would be a good opportunity to interact with the students as well and uh, share your knowledge and uh, see what's happening in the latest fields of uh, uh, molecular dynamics and drug discovery in uh, US and the associated work that you carry out. Uh, I welcome you, sir, to this program. Thank you, thank you. Um, next, I would like to welcome Dr. Seren Sara John. Seren ma'am has been coordinating the events of the seminar throughout this month. And she has done a good job and uh, she has motivated the students and all of us together have worked, uh, worked out uh, this pro these programs well. And uh, we have had good responses like I initially mentioned. And uh, Dr. Serenam has been uh, coordinating the events uh, backstage, the trials and uh, uh, sharing with the participants, giving the know-how to the volunteers of the program. Uh, Dr. Serenam, welcome you to this program. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to welcome all the faculty of the Biosciences Department and the faculty of the Union Christian College, the non-teaching faculty of our college as well to this program, who are a part of this program. And finally, the students. The students have been instrumental in the online platform uh, design, the uh, uh, parts of the design of the flyers and uh, the publicity uh, with, uh, which they give to other students so that they all participate. And uh, students have been at the forefront behind and they have truly helped us. I, ha I hope you had good experience in listening to all the seminar and you got enough motivation and inspiration to uh, pursue your scientific and academic career. And I welcome all the students of biosciences department to this program. Next, I would like to welcome all the participants who are listening to us in the platforms of Zoom and YouTube as well. And uh, it has been nice to have all of you here in our department. And uh, uh, you have had the uh, opportunity to witness some of the great speakers we have had. And thank you for your responses and your feedbacks as well. And keep coming in again. We have some more programs in store for you. Welcome uh, to the participants of the seminar. Welcome one and all. Thank you, sir, for your earned welcome address. Now, accordingly invite Dr. David Sach Matthew, sir, principal of Union Christian College, for the inaugural address. Thank you, MC. Respected manager of college, Reverend Thomas John, head department of bioscience, uh, Mr. Shyam Mohan, distinguished guest head of the IPOV, sir, uh, the direct, uh, Security Director of the uh, UCC in Utana. Adjunct Faculty, Dr. Susan Epen. Webinar Coordinator, Dr. Karin Sara John. Other faculty members of Bioscience Department and other faculty members, Union Christian College. My dear students and other participants of this webinar, have a pleasant evening to all. Computer aided drug discovery, as well as computer-aided drug designing, makes a big leap in the, uh, in the uh, pharmaceutical industry. I believe that this much number of COVID-19 vaccine drug candidates discovered all over um, in many countries uh, in a very short time, that is uh, after this uh, disease uh, become a pandemic, is by the application of a CAD, that is computer-aided drug discovery, 
as well as Kandur Raider from this side. Maybe this pandemic is uh, becoming a, a paradigm shift in the conventional aspects of science, or, or it's or it will be a, it will catalyze the evolution in the human intellectual area and knowledge. This shows that CAD, that is a computer-aided drug discovery, will greatly reduce the time for drug discovery. Normally, uh, uh, in conventional method, we know that it may go many years. As well as uh, drug designing, give the opportunity to test many proteins, which uh, can be a pot potential drug or becoming a potential vehicle for drug delivery. Uh, we know uh, usually in the in the uh, ecological studies, uh, when we are teaching about uh, this uh, conservation or bio biodiversity conservation, according to UNESCO, we, we used to say, uh, when, according to UNESCO, there are three reasons for biodiversity conservation. One is, uh, uh, Say one, one of the first one says that it is a, a, each and every organism, each and every organism have its right to live in this uh, in the face of earth or in this world, as we human being have this uh, right to live in this world. That's why we have to conserve each and every or we have to preserve their uh, habitat or preserve their space. Second one is uh, that we don't know which organism is going to give us pleasure. Uh, to entertain you, because uh, you know that some of this, uh, some of them gives you a very good, uh, it is beautiful organisms. Uh, so we, once it uh, completely extinct, we cannot see them. So we have to conserve them. The third one that is more important. We don't know which is going to help us uh, in uh, in the fight or, or in uh, help us in. Uh, uh, to overcome these diseases or which, which organism is going to help us in finding a drug for it. So the, because of these three reasons, we, we have to consider the biodiversity. So uh, this uh, particular uh, branch that is a, a computer-aided drug discovery as well as computer-aided drug design, give us this opportunity to, to test each and every protein, which is uh, either to, to become a drug or to become a, a drug vehicle, like that. So that is the one of the reason, uh, one of the importance of this topic. Of course, uh, uh, we have, uh, or we are privileged to have Dr. Minakshi Sundaram Balas Brahmanyam with us to explain all this, uh, or the latest development in this molecular dynamic simula simulation and uh, computer-aided drug discovery. I use this opportunity to welcome Dr. Balas Brahmanyam to the Union System College which is going to be celebrated 100 years of existence in the field of higher education from 2021 to 2020. Welcome, sir. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak a few words in the webinar, in this webinar, and wish you all the best. That is, uh, this webinar is going to give uh, uh, more insight in this uh, selected topic, as well as to help you to understand about computer aided drug discovery and uh, drug design, uh, as well as I think. So, thank you once again, and all the best to the organizers uh, who are uh, on behind this webinar, uh, particularly the bio bioscience department. And uh, I wish to declare this uh, uh, webinar inaugurated. Uh, and thank you very, uh, once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so there. much, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, I'm glad to invite Reverend Father Thomas John, manager of Union Christian College, to offer the felicitation and blessings. Uh, yes, scholars, um, faculty, students, and other participants of this seminar. We are greatly privileged to listen to an accomplished scholar as Dr. Meenakshi Sundaram Bailasam Rivniam, Assistant Professor and 
Inglewood Scholar, Department of Geriatrics, University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, USA. Uh, sir, I welcome you most gladly to this uh, community of Union Christian College, Alua, uh, which is celebrating its 100 years of service to the nation, especially the community in Kerala. One of the goals of uh, the Centenary Celebration is to expand our inter international partnerships. And uh, I'm glad to note that Dr. Aibwak is one of our uh, senior alumni and an accomplished scholar in this field he is facilitating this uh, seminars, which I consider as a model to be replicated and expanded. And uh, I hope that we will have more such uh, uh, opportunities in the areas of uh, uh, partnership and uh, I wish this seminar all success and uh, may you all have a, a very fruitful time. Thank you. Thank you, Father. I consider it's a great honor to welcome Professor K. Alpwargi, sir, University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, ARUSA, and is one of the board of directors of the College Alumni Association of North America to introduce our chief guest into the webinar. Dear friends, I am delighted to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Meenakshi Sundaram Balasubramaniam. I have known Dr. Balasubramaniam for the last 10 years, and I have been collaborating with him on several projects. He grew up, Dr. Balasubramaniam grew up in Chennai, and he did his postgraduate degree in biochemistry at the University of Madras. He did his postgraduate studies in bioinformatics also at the University of Madras. Afterwards, he came to Little Rock to do his PhD and joined the bioinformatics program run jointly by the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences and the University of Little Rock. <clears throat> University of Little Rock has a strong computer science department and University of uh, Arkansas for Medical Sciences has strong biological science programs. Dr. Balasubramaniam made good use of these facilities in both universities. After obtaining his degree in bioinformatics in 2016, Dr. Balasubramaniam continued to work here as a postdoctoral fellow. And in 2018, he rose to the rank of an assistant professor. Dr. Is a computational biologist with expertise in molecular simulations and computer aided drug discovery. His skills include molecular modeling and application of artificial intelligence tools to solve problems in biology. He has been studying early events in Alzheimer's disease and has published several high profile papers. I am a protein crystallographer and I like to study proteins when they fold correctly and when I can crystallize them. But when proteins misfold and aggregate, it could lead to neurodegenerative diseases. Dr. Balasubramaniam has combined various experimental and computational techniques to identify the events and interactions that lead to protein aggregation in Alzheimer's patients. This information is very useful in drug design. Apart from his research and publications, 
Dr. Balasubramaniam yeah. is doing a great deal of service to the scientific community. Recently, he created a user-friendly user tool for doing molecular simulations called WebGrow. This tool enables biologists to carry out these calculations, even if they lack in-depth knowledge of computational techniques. Dr. Balasubramaniam has graduated only in 2016, but he already has 29 good publications in reputed journals, and he has two patents. Indeed, a great accomplishment for an, in, in, for a, an young investigator. Knowing Sundar well, I can say one thing. He planned well. He knew what he wanted to do even before coming to Little Rock. Then he worked hard to accomplish his goals. Without taking more time, I will ask Dr. Balasubramaniam to tell us about his exciting work. Dr. Balasubramaniam, take it away. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. <clears throat> and uh, thank you so much for the organizers for this uh, wonderful opportunity to present uh, during the centenary uh, occasion. And uh, thank you for all the wonderful introduction. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Varghese, for, uh, for the wonderful introduction. And uh, so I feel always delighted to collaborate with you and learn from you. So as I always say. So, Without any delay, I would like to go into the presentation. Okay. 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 <clears throat> so, like Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Matthew was explaining, so molecular dynamic simulation and drug discovery uh, is taking a big uh, leap in this uh, during this pandemic and uh, thousands of publications. Uh, uh, were published uh, uh, based on this drug discovery, uh, computer-aided drug discovery. Uh, so due to the advancement in the computational uh, uh, speed and the advancement in the algorithms, uh, this molecular dynamic simulation and uh, computer-aided drug discovery uh, uh, has become an uh, inevitable tool uh, in the biomedical research. So today, uh, I would like to <clears throat> talk about how we are using the molecular dynamic simulations in computer-aided drug discovery. So I probably you might all, all learned about the drug docking and other stuff. So I'm not going to cover the drug docking and other stuff, but I'm going to talk about how we can use this molecular dynamic simulation and protein structure prediction and how that structure prediction is going to be helpful in the designing a tailor-made drugs against the protein of our interest or the target of our interest. So <clears throat> since uh, we have audience from, uh, uh, from, from bachelor degree, uh, so I would like to go uh, uh, give a brief introduction about uh, the protein structure and function, and then uh, how protein structure is very important uh, uh, in uh, determining the disease relevance and uh, molecular dynamic simulation. What is the basic of this molecular dynamic simulations and uh, how we are going to apply this molecular dynamic simulation in our rational drug design. Uh, so towards that, I would like to uh, explain how we are going to use this molecular dynamic simulation as an example uh, with our recently uh, published article on uh, this interesting GSK3 beta structure discovery. And then I will uh, end the topic with the various um, MD simulation packages. So as per the central dogma of biology, uh, the DNA uh, gets the uh, head role, like uh, determining the, uh, the genetic uh, function and uh, uh, you know, storing the genetic code. But the protein plays the major role. Proteins is the workforce of the body. Although DNA is going to uh, contain the information, but it is going to get transcribed into a protein. And proteins are the real workforce of our body. And uh, that protein plays a central role in all our biological function. For example, uh, starting from muscle contraction, uh, storing energy and uh, production of energy and antibody protection uh, and uh, oxygen like hemoglobin 
and enzyme activity, hormonal regulation. So everything, protein plays a role and protein is the one who's performing all these things. So studying the protein structure and the disease relevance uh, is very important in uh, fighting against any disease or doing a drug discovery. So the various levels of protein structure. So as soon as the protein gets transcribed from the uh, from the uh, from the mRNA, so it will be just like a slender uh, amino acid sequence, like a long slender. And then due to the action of chaperones and uh, all other heat shock protein, it gets folded into its native conformation, starting from the secondary structure. And then further folding will happen for the tertiary structures where it contains a lot of domains, the functional domains. And then some proteins uh, might also go to the quaternary structure, which is uh, they perform uh, like two or more protein, different protein in complex together, forming one functional unit. Uh, we call we, we can call that as a quaternary structure. So these are all the functional uh, uh, unit of this protein to perform their their structure. So protein structure determines its function. So uh, in order to perform a, a function, uh, the protein has to have some conserved uh, structure as well as some conserved. Uh, uh, sequence. So, for example, uh, most of these uh, the, the, our proteins are widely conserved, depending on what function they are uh, performing. So, we can able to identify its function based on its structure. So, uh, for example, uh, various kinases. So, almost all the tyrosine serine kinases they are conserved across uh, the species, and then uh, in 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 some of their uh, uh, structure. For example, the kinase domain which is conserved across all the kinases. Having said this, uh, there is also an exception for this uh, structure conservation. So like Dr. Varghese was explaining a few minutes before, when a protein is highly disordered, we cannot, uh, that protein cannot have a, a strictly conserved uh, structure. The classic example is 14.33. And this is by nature, it is like that because a protein, if it wants to perform many function, for example, kinase perform only kinase function, but 14.33 might perform more than one function. So in order to do that, it has to take multiple conformation. So the 14.33 is a highly disordered protein and it does not have an ordered conformation when it is uh, all by itself. But when it interacts with another protein, it can take a, a conformation uh, for performing that uh, particular function. So that's the conservation, nature conservation of those disordered proteins. So coming back to the widely conserved, uh, uh, like the kinase structure, because I would like to uh, give an introduction about kinase because that's what I'm going to talk in the later, uh, uh, later in this talk. So if you can see this uh, uh, picture, like uh, AKT kinase, ABL kinase, and GSK3 beta, all we can see is uh, the, uh, it's, it's having that conserved structure there. So if you can see the pointer there, so the circled regions is the kinase domain and it is widely conserved across all the kinase. So you can, you can download any protein, uh, uh, any kinase structure from the PDB. And if you can notice this, you will see this uh, structure, uh, the, uh, the paired uh, beta sheet domain and then followed by a hinge region and the loop. And I'll come back to this loop in the next slide. So, as a, uh, when, a, when a kinase structure, if we want to determine the, the kinase structure, so we want we would like to know more about the, the basic structural unit of this kinase domain. So the circled region here is the, is the ATP binding region. Uh, we all know that uh, in order for the kinase to perform its function, the ATP has to bind and then it gets uh, uh, phosphorylated and activated. So this is the ATP binding domain. And there is another uh, very conserved uh, region in this kinase, which is called the DFG loop. So which is uh, nothing but aspartic acid phenylalanine glycine. So you can take any kinase domain and if you go to that loop, you will find these three amino acids conserved uh, across the kinase structure. So that DFG loop determines the, uh, it, it, it plays a major role in the kinase uh, activity. So, for example, uh, the picture here we are seeing is the is a is a close uh, uh, image of this DFG domain. So, here we can see the phenylalanine ring, which is facing outside from us, and then the aspartic acid is facing towards us. I would like you to remember this orientation. 
So this is what we call as a DFG in confirmation, which is the active confirmation. So when the phenylalanine faces other side of the other side from us, and then aspartic acid faces towards us, then we call that confirmation as an active confirmation. And the picture we are seeing here is the ABL kinase active confirmation. So during this active confirmation, uh, the ATP, uh, the kinase can bind with the ATP and then perform its downstream target. So, like I said, there is another uh, confirmation. So when there is an active confirmation, so there is an inactive confirmation. So the nature has preserved uh, that uh, active switch in and out because we don't want kinase to perform or kinase to be active all the time because that leads to cancer. So we want after the cell production or after the downstream target is done, we want to switch off this kinase activity. So uh, the nature has given an excellent uh, way to do that, which is nothing but that same DFG loop. So during the inactivation, what happens is that phenylalanine, what we have seen, it will face now, will turn 180 degree and then will face us and then the aspartic acid goes the other side. So there is a DFG flip happens uh, during the inactivation. So at that point, you can clearly see that the ATP binding domain will go like the, the, the cavity become less or the drug, the site where the ATP binds will shrink. So at that point, ATP cannot bind. At the same time, the phenylalanine is facing towards uh, us or the kinase domain uh, inhibits the ATP binding. So at that point, the kinase become inactive. So we call that DFG out confirmation and that's the inactive confirmation of kinase. So that's how the kinase uh, perform its activity like in and out. So when a, when a cell produces a signal for, for the kinase activity, that, uh, that kinase become active. And then when the activity is done, it has to go inactive. So, so what, so this, this activation and inactivation plays a, a very uh, important role in, the, in, in many diseases, especially in cancer. Uh, because uh, when, a, like I said before, when a, when a kinase is always active, it's gonna send the continuous signal and it's gonna perform its downstream activity continuously. So uh, then for example, if it is an EGFR kinase or BRAF or KRAS, then we're gonna get cell progression continuously, uncontrolled cell production. So that's what we, we, it leads to cancer. So studying this and that's how the inhibitor, the drug discovery emerged to block that activation or to block the uh, 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 further downstream target. So there are two kinds of drugs that we can use in the kinase, which is the type one inhibitor and type two inhibitor. So which I'll come back to that in, 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 in the later slides. So in order to do the Taylor made a drug discovery for any particular kinase. So we want to know the structure of that protein, like, uh, uh, like because proteins, uh, like I you know, said before, exist as a flexible entities. So it can take multiple conformation depending on the activity and depending on the, uh, on the function. So in that case, like most, uh, most proteins, like, uh, you know, they also transition between uh, many conformations. So one example that I showed is this uh, active and inactive conformation. So that is another example I can tell you is about uh, Sarka, which is the calcium, uh, calcium flux protein, like a membrane protein, which participate in the calcium transport. So you can see here uh, the structure on the left side is the uh, is the maybe we, we cannot call it active and inactive, but I would say uh, this is an open conformation of the circuit. And once the calcium pump going to happen, that uh, the these two domains, as we are seeing here, shrinks. So it forms like a like a pump, and then this is the membrane bound region, and that calcium is pumped towards this membrane. So all these uh, uh, are very important uh, 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 events to notice uh, visually and structurally because each and every stage is important in designing uh, the drug, an effective drug. So experimental structures uh, uh, like a crystallography is, has to be there as a starting material to, to do it. But the dynamics has to be, maybe we might not see the complete activation and inactivation during NMR or in the crystallography. So that's one thing. Although, you know, they are having a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, dynamics, 
uh, still there in uh, both NMR and the uh, crystallography, but we might not able to see the full activation or inactivation using that. But uh, we need to have a starting material which can come from either uh, X-ray structure or the NMR, and from that we can continue using simulations to see that activation or inactivation, which I'm going to show you in a while. So understanding this dynamics is very crucial because if we want to have a drug in the intermediate stage, or if you want to see exactly what uh, events are happening, so you, you must have to know this uh, uh, transition. So also this knowledge will guide us towards the tailor-made drugs. So how do we visualize this macromolecule transition state, which is the computer-aided you know, uh, simulations, which is the molecular dynamics simulation? So in brief, what is this molecular dynamic simulation? Uh, it's like it's a computational method for analyzing the physical movements of atoms and residues in the macromolecule. So we know that all this protein is also made up of this, is a, is a general atom atomic structure. So using this molecular dynamic simulations, we are using a force, which is all mathematical calculation. So we are using the force and then we are calculating how this physical movements of this atoms uh, happens. So, because what we do is we will, in a fixed period of time, we will make these atoms and molecules in the protein to oscillate or to interact with each other and then calculates this energy. So energy of interaction, energy of angle and everything will calculate, uh, especially with the potential energies. And then using the formula, the molecular mechanics, uh, we will derive uh, uh, to the equation and we will derive to the three-dimensional structure of transition. So it all happens in the fraction of seconds in computational time. So mostly this is what the potential energy will be calculating. So like if you take any structure, so this is the basic unit of a protein structure and we have uh, uh, like an angle uh, energy from the angle, energy from the dihedral, energy of interaction, energy of electrostatic. So all this will calculate and then we will see how that uh, physical movement happens and we can derive uh, a, a structural uh, a basis for a protein itself. So MD simulation uh, uh, was originally developed in early 1950s uh, uh, in the theoretical physics. And then after the X-ray crystallography uh, became uh, an inevitable tool, uh, molecular dynamics uh, started with the X-ray crystallography then. Uh, so MD simulations are often used to refine proteins or nucleic acids uh, that are from x on NMR. And uh, normally, like uh, it mimics the uh, biological uh, system. We have to mimic the biological system, which is this MD simulations will be performed in an aqueous medium, uh, like containing uh, water molecules. And then we will also add the ions and the uh, salt to, to make it to the physiological condition, 7.4 pH like that. And then we'll do the simulation to see what is the behavior of that protein. So that's how the molecular dynamics will be done. So like, for example, here we are seeing, so we have a protein, we'll then construct a box and then we'll put ions. And so all this we are seeing is the water molecules and ions. So we'll add it according uh, to match to the physiological condition and then we'll apply the force field. The force, force field can be of anything and we can apply the force field and then simulate that for nanoseconds to microseconds. And then you can analyze the trajectories uh, to see what's going on and what's the, what's the structural changes. But in order to predict large conformational changes, so that, uh, or even the subtle conformational changes uh, like what we have seen for the kinase, or the, the circa that I showed you, it's a large conformational change from, from really an open conformation to uh, the closed conformation. Uh, we might need a longer simulation, like say in microseconds or maybe milliseconds, which is not available yet, but we do have a microsecond scale simulations uh, uh, right now. So uh, for example, like uh, uh, this is from my example, uh, you know, from my experience uh, 10 years before when I joined in this, uh, you know, uh, in this program, uh, I started by learning the simulation. So I wanted to do this A-beta peptide, which is 42 amino acid, just 42 amino acid in a box. And I'm having a small laptop that time, I think I3 or I5, I don't know. So when I wanted to do the solvated simulation, let's say for 0.5 microseconds, uh, uh, it is showing me that it's going to take three months of time. 
So just for that uh, 42 amino acid peptide. So that's what it was long time before. But now due to this uh, advancement in this GPU, the graphical processing uh, unit technology. So now this has become like, like in, like in no time we can do microsecond scale simulations even for large proteins. So what are all the area, the areas of application, the MD simulation and drug discovery? So uh, like I said before, uh, we can use this molecular dynamic simulation primarily to predict and refine protein structure. If you have a wild type, for example, or the native conformation, and then if you want to predict the mutate and mutation structure, in case if you don't have an X-ray or NMR crystals result, you can apply this molecular dynamic simulation and you can run it for a longer period of time uh, to predict the uh, mutational structure. Same way, longer lens MD simulations uh, uh, has been extensively used uh, for predicting the protein structure all by itself, like in the ab initio method. Uh, like for example, many disordered proteins, uh, we, we might not have, or we don't have a, a X-ray or NMR structure. So during that condition, uh, we can use this ab initio structure prediction uh, to get a, a theoretical idea about how that structure looks like. So although it is not a preferred strategy, like I said, it is a theoretical model, but uh, that is a good place to start with this ab initio structure prediction. Uh, and then you can do you know, further studies on that. And uh, also, like I said, uh, for predicting large and uh, subtle conformational changes in proteins, uh, like even if you want to know uh, the full domain movement or a protein-protein interaction, like the large protein conformation change, we can use molecular dynamic simulations, or we can use uh, this molecular dynamics for this very uh, minimum or very minute, uh, you know, structural changes, but that makes a big deal in the in the in the drug discovery. So for that also, we can use this uh, MD simulation. So both active and inactive confirmation uh, of this kinases, uh, like I told before, are very crucial for the cancer drug discovery. So like uh, from the example of ABL, uh, we know that paper really made a big gain big in 1998, which when they found this imatinib uh, as a serendipity, like uh, when, it is, when it is an ATP non-competitive, then when they resolved the X-ray structure, they found that it is not binding to the ATP kinase uh, site as they thought but it is binding to a different uh, site near to the DFG loop, which is in the out conformation. And that's how the whole uh, inactive conformation field and the kinase started. So that's a very interesting uh, uh, story of that ABL kinase uh, and the imatinib. So however, there are not many inactive conformation kinases solved using experimental approach like NMR or crystal, uh, crystal structure because of that DFG loop is uh, highly um, I don't say disordered, but it's very hard to catch the X-ray diffraction at that region. And same with the uh, NMR, uh, it, it's a pretty big kinesis. We cannot have NMR anyway. So not many inactive confirmations are available so far. So we can use MD simulations to predict inactive, such inactive confirmations uh, if you want to do uh, target-based or tailor-based drug discovery. So what are the various categories of these MD simulations? So uh, there are many categories and depending on your need, so uh, and the nature of the problem that you are addressing, you could use a different type of MD simulation. So uh, this one I would like to say, like you have to know, like we have to know what we want the most. Like it's like the Jack Sparrow's uh, uh, compass. So computational biology is like the Jack Sparrow compass. It points you to what you want the most, but uh, but the main thing is we have to know what we want the most and we have to ask the right question uh, towards what I need to, uh, what I want from this. So based on that need, we can uh, use different type of uh, simulations. So uh, the general simulation, which is for refining uh, general protein structure and for predicting protein drug interactions, we can use this uh, general atomistic uh, MD simulation. And there is another interesting class of uh, simulation, which I'm going to talk today is the metadynamic simulation or which is called extended sampling method. So, and that can be used for predicting large known conformational changes. And then here we have another one called replica exchange molecular dynamic simulations, which is I think what REMD they call. So mostly we use this for the protein folding, analyzing the protein folding 
uh, and uh, and uh, a protein unfolding events, and then free energy perturbations, which which is which really talks about again the protein structure and the drug protein interaction. So what is the free energy of interactions? In that? So the metadynamic simulation is uh, nothing but an extended enhanced or extended uh, sampling method. So I would like you to, you know, I, I know see this, uh, the, the part that I am uh, focusing. So in a general simulation, what happens is uh, you have an energy barrier here. And then during the simulation, that energy minima drops. And then your seed or the protein structure, when it reaches to certain energy minima, our simulation, the general simulation will stop or it will stay there for a very long period of time, maybe for milliseconds. So you won't get the other structure because think about this is a protein having two conformation uh, and both of the conformation are in an energy minima state. So in that case, you will only find this structure during your simulation and it will never reach this structure. So that's the normal uh, simulation. But during the extended uh, uh, or enhanced sampling method or during metadynamics, what happens is as soon as the energy minima reaches to certain, we use uh, the co collective variables. So based on the collective variables, we pushes this, you know, technically this, this creates a sand kind of behavior, and then it looks for another confirmation in the cascade. So that's how it rises up and then it puts the seed and the seed can go into another place like here. So then we can find another energy minimized confirmation. So that's the very basic of this uh, metadynamic simulation. So uh, this is an example I would like to go uh, in detail, which is uh, the structural modeling of inactive, the DFG out confirmation of this GSK3 beta protein uh, using the metadynamic simulation. So the GSK3 beta, uh, uh, controls many physiological pathways and it's widely studied protein and it's a very uh, interesting target in both cancer as well as in Alzheimer's uh, disease. So and just uh, the GSK3 beta uh, plays a major role in NF-kappa B and many other uh, pathways. And uh, inhibitors suppressing this activity, the GSK3 beta activity uh, showed protection against Alzheimer's and tau pathology as well as in several cancers. Because GSK3 beta is the one of the important kinase that hyperphosphorylates tau, which is the one of the seed proteins in the uh, Alzheimer's uh, aggregates. So when you inhibit the GSK, it protects against that uh, tau hyperphosphorylation and thereby reduces a uh, bunch of neurofibrillary tangles. So there are many type two GSK3 beta inhibitors have been proposed, but there is no structural information of how it interacts. So the type two inhibitors in any kinase means uh, it's targeting, it is a non-ATP competitor. So there are many, uh, you know, it's very hard to really compete with the uh, ATP, although there are a lot very good uh, type one inhibitors available for many kinases, uh, but designing a tailor-made ATP inhibitor is very tricky uh, because uh, we have to uh, account for the competition between uh, the natural ATP versus our uh, uh, chemical uh, or the compound. So type 2 inhibitors uh, is one way uh, preferable uh, because it is not going to compete with ATP, uh, but it has to inhibit the kinase activity. However, designing the type 2 inhibitors is very competitive because, and very challenging because of lack of the crystal structure or the NMR structure in the out conformation for many kinases. So, and we also face it the same trouble for the GSK3 beta. So, uh, because we are uh, in our lab right now, we are working on uh, designing a tailor-made drugs for this type two inhibitors again, uh, type two against GSK. But without knowing the pharmacophore or without knowing the exact uh, structural orientation where the drug binds, it's very hazard to really design a, a, a potent uh, structure-based drugs against this molecule. So. And one such example is the TTCD analog, uh, because TTCD was, uh, I think, invented in 2002 uh, as, a, as a drug against Alzheimer's. Uh, and uh, using biochemical uh, assay, they predicted that, or they showed that TTCD interacts, uh, or TTCD is a type two, uh, the ATP non-competitive inhibitors against GSK3 beta. 
But however, till date, there is no crystal structure for uh, GSK3 beta bound to TD08. So creating a second generation compound or creating, creating a tailor-made compounds uh, against that particular uh, site is a little tricky uh, to do that. So when I did this unbiased docking, uh, protein protein drug docking, um, I couldn't see the interaction of TDCD8 to the proposed site. Uh, in 2002 paper, they proposed, and after that, there are 16, 16 to 20 publications came in that, and they all proposed the binding region or binding residues for the TDCD8 using biochemical assay. But when I do the docking with the active confirmation of GSA, I couldn't able to see uh, that interactions. So that then I thought could be the reason because it's in citizen type two or non ATP competitive, it might be interacting to the uh, inactive confirmation. And since we don't have the inactive confirmation of GSK, we might not be able to get the exact uh, uh, structure uh, binding mode or anything for the TDC. So that's when I started using this uh, metadynamic simulation approach. And uh, then I wanted to create or predict the inactive confirmation from the available active confirmation via the crystal structure. Uh, from the crystal structure. So this is the uh, crystal structure of GSK3 beta uh, active confirmation. So like I said before, the phenylalanine is facing the other side and the aspartic acid is facing, uh, facing towards us. And this is the classic TFG in confirmation but there is no inactive confirmation uh, for this. So what I thought is I have a good starting material, which is this crystal structure of GSK3 beta, which is a high resolution crystal structure. So I have a very good starting material. So why not I apply this myomolecular dynamic simulation and can I predict the out confirmation? So this is the proposed TDCD8 binding from the 2002 journal. Like they said, mainly the lysine 205, 96, and tyrosine 216. That's the region where the TDCD8 uh, can bind. This is all prediction from them. From, they're using biochemical assay. And according to this prediction, the binding of TDCD should be somewhere around here. And that's where we have lysine 205 and, uh, and uh, all these amino acids, uh, uh, arginine 96. But when I used the crystal structure, and then when I did the docking, the crystal structure of the active confirmation, and then when I did the docking, I couldn't able to see the interaction here at all. Instead, the TDCD went and bound bind somewhere here, which is near to the ATP binding site. So when I compare the interaction energies, the MMGBSA uh, interaction energies, uh, that reflects exactly the same nature of TDCD8, which they proposed, which is it can never be an ATP competitive because the more the binding energy of ATP is way more than TDCD8. So ATP uh, TDCD8 can only be a uh, ATP non-competitive. So I was analyzing what is the reason for that. So when you do the druggable site prediction from the active confirmation of GSK3 beta, uh, I can able to see a big pocket here which is the ATP binding site, but there is no pocket uh, where the proposed TDCD8 binding, which is the hydrophobic, which is supposed to have an hydrophobic uh, pocket there, but it is not there during the active confirmation. So these are all the reasons why we need the prediction of inactive confirmation to, to really see the mode of binding of TDCD8 and to predict. So what we did is I took the active confirmation and I defined the collective variables. So like I said before, metadynamic simulation can only be performed for the known conformational change. For example, if you know this protein is going to make the change, then you can perform this molecular dynamic simulations. And it cannot, it cannot be performed for unknown conformational change. So this is a known conformational change. I know where the change I'm looking for. So I use the collective variables, like defining the site where I'm really looking for the change. And then did the simulation, the MD sim, the metadynamic simulations. And then I trajected, I, I did the trajectory analysis. So when I did that uh, simulation for like 50 nanoseconds itself, because it's an enhanced sampling, you don't need long run simulation. So here you can clearly see now the phenylalanine now facing towards us and then the aspartic acid went the other way. So this is the, uh, the green is the active confirmation 
that the phenylalanine is facing the other side and the aspartic acid is facing towards us in the green. And then during the inactive conformation, that 180 degree flip happened and then both phenylalanine and aspartic acids switch sides. So that's happened nicely. So that clearly indicates that we are predicting the inactive conformation. And uh, just like any other uh, classic uh, kinase, uh, GSK also undergoes that uh, transition state, which is DFG up. So this is well documented in ABL kinase, uh, where uh, you can, and also in Aurora uh, uh, kinase, where the, from the transition from in active to inactive or the in to out will happen by a phenylalanine up. So for a brief period of time, this phenylalanine uh, stays up like this. And after that, the flip happens. So we are also seeing that. This is also another indication that uh, we are, the metadynamic simulation is predicting the correct course of uh, changes. So now I have this final structure of this GSK3 beta out confirmation, but I wanted to know whether the predicted structure is matching with already available crystal structures for other kinases, the active inactive confirmation. Because like I said before, structure is very important in determining the drug. Uh, if we have a wrong structure, uh, everything else we predict after that uh, might be a little misleading. So we have to make sure that the structure that we predicted is uh, making uh, is biologically making sense. So for that, I took all these other uh, uh, known inactive confirmation and, and all these, we can clearly see that the orientation matches with the, with the with experimental evidence, indicating that the structure that we got in the GSK3 bit uh, inactive uh, might reflect the biologically meaningful structure. And this is the video that I would like to uh, I would like to show uh, where uh, just a second. Okay. So here you can see during the simulation, the phenylalanine goes up, stays there for a while, and then it flips back. So that is the metadynamic simulation. And once it flips back, it stays there for a while. So that's, this is the classic uh, uh, video of showing the metadynamics, how it happens. And I can play it again for you. So once it is on the other side, during the simulation, it goes up, and then it flips back, both aspartic acid and the phenylalanine forming an inactive conformation. So, once you have the structure, then the predicting your uh, drug discovery will be very useful because now this is the DFG in confirmation and this is the DFG out predicted confirmation. Now you can clearly see the shift in the uh, docking pocket. Like I said before, uh, during the inactive confirmation, the ATP pocket shrinks and there is no pocket in the ATP. So this confirmation cannot have any binding to ATP. Instead, there is a creation of new pocket in the DFG region, which is the hydrophobic pocket. And that's where the type two inhibitors usually bind. And this is where we might expect the TDCD to bind to. So now when I used that uh, structure and did the docking, now I can clearly see the interaction of TDCD8 exactly as proposed in the 2002 publication, which is lysine 205 and the arginine 96 here. So forming an interaction in the DFG out confirmation. And the interaction energy also is way high comparing to when it was interacting to the active. And this clearly demonstrates that the structure that we predicted in the inactive confirmation might be really biologically relevant. And the TDCD8 binding also reflects the bio biochemical evidences. So then after I did the docking, I wanted to see whether that uh, 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 the binding is stable uh, because during the regular simulation, we can expect uh, other changes also. So during the simulation of 500 nanoseconds uh, in the in the solvated condition, I can I can see that the RMSD here, what we are the red is the TDCD8 and the, uh, aligned to the protein, which is in the blue, and we can clearly see that both of them in the same trend, which is the TDC uh, the RMSD has a straight line, which indicates that the interaction the protein ligand complex is stable throughout this 500 nanoseconds, which also demonstrate the stability of protein ligand binding. So now we have what we did not have before, which is the uh, protein ligand complex. 
So now with this, we can do uh, many things, which is we can do, we can predict the pharmacophore, we can predict the, uh, we, can, we can increase the potency of the drug binding. So like that, uh, what I did is now I have the structure, can I able to predict all other TDCD uh, analogs interactions? So thide glucid is one of the uh, recent uh, TDCD analog, which is a ATP non-competitive and uh, it, which is a clinical trial right now for the GSK3 beta. And uh, again, there was no crystal structure for thide glucid binding to GSK3 beta. And uh, using this uh, structure, the newly developed uh, inactive conformation, now we can able to see the TDCD8 binding and clearly demonstrate the biological uh, uh, flow, which is the TDCD, the tight inclusive has uh, more binding than TDCD8, which is what is been already proposed uh, or shown in biochemical. So now using this model, we can predict the pharmacophore. Uh, for example, here we are seeing what important residues or what important uh, side chain from the, from the drug is important or crucial for maintaining this protein uh, protein interactions or the activity. So TDCD8, exactly as predicted uh, uh, previously, uh, the TDCD ring and the other benzene ring is the pharmacophore and uh, the prediction exactly matches with the wet lab analysis. And for the tight glucid, we have an, another extra ring that is making the, making the interaction more stable at the same time inhibiting the GSK kinase more potently. So, uh, so that's that's how we developed that inactive confirmation, and uh, uh, I can send the paper uh, link, which has just got published three days before. Uh, and uh, if anybody work, uh, wanted to work on this, uh, you know, GSK3 beta drugs or were previously working on, and if you are in need of this inactive confirmation, we have a repository where you can download the PDB structures, uh, all these PDB structures, uh, and uh, uh, you can make use of it. And uh, so what are all the different uh, uh, software, the MD software uh, available for the uh, MD simulations is like, uh, so that's very important to know. And Gromax is the one of the top line software for, uh, uh, for doing this MD simulations. And uh, due to this advancement and uh, bug fixings and Gromax, as well as Desmond, which is developed by TE Shaw Research. And uh, this is one of the uh, package that you get it in Schrodinger Maestro. So that's one, both of both Gromax and Desmond uh, 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 are like uh, uh, very nice in predicting the biological uh, uh, changes, and so as Amber and, and NAMD. So, uh, so what I have done is uh, since mostly people prefer Gromax for because it's a um, um, it's one is free and at the same time uh, uh, it can the prediction from gromax is uh, is very interesting and very reliable so so i used to get a lot of this uh, uh, calls from, from my friends and uh, from collaborators about performing in gromax so what i have done is i've created a tool uh, for performing this protein uh, dynamic simulation. But at this moment, the, pro uh, the tool is still under construction and probably we're expecting to release worldwide in a month or so. So at which you can, you can look for this. And uh, so you don't need any uh, big computers or, uh, or uh, programming language you know, knowledge to use this software. You just need to have your protein or your protein ligand complex and you can perform simulations and the, our tool will perform simulation and also uh, analyze trajectories uh, for you uh, and produce the results so uh, which will be pretty soon in a month or so because of this pandemic uh, we couldn't get people working on our supercomputer so that was a little delay right now so with this uh, i would like to acknowledge uh, my uh, mentors uh, during my uh, my journey in uh, science, Dr. Robert Smucker Reese, my PhD mentor, and then uh, Dr. Suti Griffin, and of course, Dr. Uh, I. Debra, my postdoctoral mentors, and then Dr. Crooks and Dr. Barger, my collaborators uh, uh, for this Alzheimer's project. And then uh, uh, my lab members, uh, uh, being, and then the graduate students uh, uh, working on many of our projects. Uh, with that, I would like to acknowledge all of the all my research collaborators, uh, uh, especially Dr. Burgess, uh, because we've been 
um, working very successful in a lot of collaboration. I learned a lot from him after uh, uh, starting my collaboration with him. Um, so uh, I would like to thank all the collaborators for wonderful uh, uh, giving me the wonderful opportunity to work on. And then, of course, without the funding, you know, all this would have not been possible. So uh, by God's grace, uh, so far we are uh, we are good funded uh, with uh, the NIH and uh, all the other scholarship programs and Department of Veterans Affairs. I would like to thank all the uh, funding support. Uh, with this, I would like to, uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the highly inspiring time with us. Your remarkable depth of understanding of the subject made the lecture an exceptionally stimulating and informative one. Thank you again, sir. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed this amazing presentation. And now, sir, we'll answer some of your questions and uh, uh, that were sent to us during the presentation. Your participants, please be sure to type your questions into the chat box. Oh, so, okay, okay, I have to look for the questions. Oh God, there are a lot of questions. <laughs> sir, I, I okay. can help with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, how to analyze. Okay, I'll go from the from the last, so. Can I, can okay. I read it out? Can I read it out, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm reading it. So, okay. So Maybe from... I, I can help. Sir. Yes, yes, please, because I couldn't see where <laughs> that is. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. So the first question is, how to analyze and interpret uh, big data sets effectively as a traditional approaches to the analysis of simulations do not scale well uh, to system with the thousands of macromolecules? Yes, uh, that's a fantastic question. So yeah, with the different macromolecules, uh, we at this moment, that's uh, uh, they are still in the development and we cannot use uh, that kind of uh, analysis or uh, simulations for uh, different macromolecules. Like maybe we can go up to like, I have done up to five to 10 uh, proteins in the same complex, which took longer time, but still uh, that's the limit. But if you are looking for different macromolecules, uh, their interactions, I would, uh, 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 you know, I would uh, suggest you to work experimentally using some chemical cross-linking methods and then go for the mass spectrometry there. You will know the protein-protein interactions. Exactly, you know what protein faces what. Once you know that kind of information, then we can always come back to molecular dynamic simulations. Uh, which are the tools used for molecular dynamics? Uh, okay, like I said, yeah, we can use Gromax, uh, which is, uh, I would recommend Gromax or Desmond uh, uh, to use the molecule MD simulation to, to get started with. A lot of good tutorials available, so it's it's best to start with Gromax. Okay, sir. Can, uh, can nanotechnology knowledge be used in enhancing the simulations? I am not really sure about nanotechnology. Um, I'm not really into the nanotechnology, so... I might, uh, I don't know, I don't know about that. Okay, sir. Uh, can molecular dynamics uh, have any role in toxicology? Uh, toxicology, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, one toxicology, okay, uh, it depends on what uh, we are looking for. Say for example, I did one kind of thing. Uh, if, a, if a drug has multiple interacting partners, then that itself is a toxicity. Like a drug can interact with many kinases, for example, if I do something, that is a toxic toxicity. If you are analyzing that, then you can use this MD simulation. You can take many kinases structure, and if you have a drug, you can try to talk with or do the simulation with all other kinases, and you can look how much uh, off-target effects that I'm getting. So that kind of studies is possible, uh, but it also depends on what toxic toxicity studies you want to do. So, um, the other one is how can we relate NGS, NGS and CAD? Okay, NGS is that, uh, okay, uh, I don't know, really like uh, uh, computer data like this. Okay, you know, uh, NGS has uh, information that can give probably your uh, mutational studies and other stuff. Again, it has to come back to the protein level. And if you, then, then again, you, you can go with that. But I'm not sure exactly how, we want to relate NGS and CAD, you know, like I couldn't quite understand, quite couldn't get that. Okay, sir, it's okay. Uh, one person asked, um, could you please suggest uh, some material 
uh, that uh, he couldn't unable to find AI in CAD. AI in CAD. Okay. So if, okay, uh, AI, I'm also new to this, but I can suggest you one thing, uh, or I can type here, I, if I can, the software you can use, which is called Orange. So Orange is an AI uh, or a neural network package. It has many, uh, many things. It can do data modeling and it can do data mining, a lot of stuff. So that is the best place to start with. So for the AI. Because once you are familiar with that, then you can use Python or R uh, or TensorFlow uh, to do that. But uh, if you are a beginner, I would say you can start with Orange software package for the AI. Is the AI necessary for uh, MD? No, no, no. A is not really necessary for MD, actually. But um, totally, it's not uh, necessary. Because MD is performed using this mathematical calculation, and you don't need it. You don't need AI for that. So which simulation tool is more reliable? That is either Gromax or Desmond. Yeah, I use both of them. So yeah, uh, it's not reliable like that, but uh, see like that, that's what I told, like, you know, everything will produce some results, mathematical uh, calculations, right? But uh, it all depends on whether, you know, it, it makes biologically sense or not. Uh, because both Gromax and Desmond uh, has a high number of publications. So has Amber, uh, you know, one is a United Atom simulation and one is an all atom simulation. But I would say both of them are better. If you're a very, you know, if you have a GPU computing and if you're so much, if you don't know much about programming, then you can go for Desmond. It does a nice user-friendly uh, software like a GUI. So you can go with Desmond. So what is the best free available software for molecular dynamics? Both, both, uh, both uh, Gromax and Desmond, as far as I know, is free uh, for academic. So oh, um, MD simulations tools can be. Uh, it is possible. Is it possible to do in normal laptops? No, that's what I told you. you know, if you are on to do a normal laptop, uh, you know, it might take months to complete. You know, we cannot do. But if you if your laptop has a GPU, yes. But still, we cannot. I don't think we can use any any simulations of as far as I know is not Windows based. But if you have a normal laptop with, let's say, uh, NVIDIA uh, you know, P5000 or some Quadro GPUs, which has a, a long, like a more than 1,000 to 2,000 CUDA cores, then you can do uh, MD simulations in your laptop. Yes. Oh, okay, sir. But GPU so is which, important. Okay. Uh, so the next one is, uh, which language and MD software combination can be used to check a range of parameters one by one looping? Uh, looping, I think uh, he means that uh, batch processing. So we can use the Linux bash scripting and Python maybe. Okay, sir. The tool that I have right now, uh, the web tool is actually from uh, bash Linux scripting, PHP and Python. So you can use that kind of stuff. Okay, so, so uh, the other question is, herbal uh, phytoconstituents, molecular dynamics, any hope? in drug development. Okay, uh, what I didn't quite get. Okay, just a second. Uh, phytoconstituents, phytomolecular. Phytoconstituents uh, in the sense like, uh, I think the herbal uh, natural products, I think uh, they are mentioning natural products. Yes, yes, actually the, uh, the doctor groups, uh, like I told, is one of the natural products, uh, uh, guys. Yes, yes, uh, Ranjit, natural product, yes. So. It is. It has a lot scope, actually. You can start with the natural product, and then once you have the pharmacophore, that's what we go now. We can start with the natural products, like Dr. Crooks is one of the big, uh, all-time big medicinal chemists to the natural products, and then you can you can go with the uh, with the further development in the drug. Yes. Okay, sir. Um, may I hand over to our attorney, sir, um, for some Thank questions? You. Sure. Uh, sir, I'd just like to ask one question. See, uh, yes. sir, once a molecule has been uh, found to have good activity uh, mm -hmm. after the molecular dynamics part of it, and uh, what is uh, the journey later? Is it like how much time it takes? And uh, are you aware of any molecule that has finished for this the... process and is a, and how? Yes, for... Uh -huh. For the FDA approval, you're asking? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, uh, I, I believe that uh, 
uh, sir, I believe that uh, molecular dynamics uh, has uh, reduced the time that is needed for finding out a molecule to big big extent. What about yes. the next phase of it? Uh, that uh, still uh, is I uh, have not. So, okay, if you take fifteen years for uh, normally they say like uh, like ten ten twenty years before uh, a, a drug to get into the market, maybe Doctor Borges can correct me in that. It takes easily twelve to fifteen years they say uh, starting from because they use traditional screening and once the screening is done, it has to go to the FDA. Right now, maybe we can say three years of the time may be reduced due to this. Because the drugs that we are screening right now, eight thousand. Uh, I have like a, a library of eight hundred thousand compounds. Using the Maestro, we can screen uh, probably in like uh, three to four days. So that's it. And then we can put another filters. And but the actual testing after that is still the same. So that, I, as far as I know, it has not changed. But of course, we have to also agree that you know how. Uh, how good we are predicting, and a lot of things matters in this. Uh, so, especially with the clinical trials, it's it's a big gamble. <laughs> so, is there a possibility for a molecule to combat the COVID nineteen, the protein, the spike protein? There are a lot actually, but that's what we have to go with the FDA approved drugs. Right now, I think even we, I have, I got an uh, uh, like a like a talk, uh, a good talk with the NIH uh, program officers that they are right now work, looking for for Alzheimer's or. I don't think about, I don't know about cancer, but for Alzheimer's especially, they're looking for FDA approved, repurposing of FDA approved drugs. Because since the regular drug discovery is taking much longer time, so FDA approval drug will pass through all the phase one and phase two easily. And it will directly go to the phase three or phase four, I believe. But COVID-19, I think that's what can happen. Uh, but I'm not sure how many testings are happening. But uh, the the... The recent drug for that uh, spike protein or that uh, RDRP, the trans uh, RDRP, I forgot the name of that. But I think it was kind of good in the clinical trial, but I don't know what happened after that. But Even I've heard about uh, this ivermectin uh, trials in Australia, I think. Ivermectin is the ones which are used for parasitic infections, I believe. The spike, uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah. So the transport protein is uh, what they are targeting. I have read it somewhere. I'm not... Uh... Yeah, yeah. I, I think, yeah, target protein is very important because once the, if you if you inhibit the spike, when it cannot attach to the host, then it cannot replicate. You know, that's, that is one. And there is another one, which is the RDR, which is the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. When you inhibit that, then it cannot uh, replicate. So these things are there. So the... So the, you know, FDA approved drugs are the already known... Uh, 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 you know, the viral drug has the scope. But I don't think new drug discovery will take long time for that. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Good to talk to you, Sham. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, there is another question also. Uh -huh. One of the our participants completed a research work in in silico analysis of docking and dynamics. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe, is it possible to create a database Yes, 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 it is possible. Uh, there is a website. Okay, just a minute. I can share. You can go to this uh, database called uh, Mendeley, uh, data.mendeley.com. So, okay, you can go here and you can create your repository, like um, uh, all your uh, structures. And uh, that's where I, I did it. So, you can create a formally the, the user ID and then you can create your database on that. And while publication, uh, you can give this link once you publish that that becomes your own repository. Okay, sir. So it looks like we have completed almost every questions. Nice. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so thank much. you. Thank you again, sir, for answering those thank questions you. and for the great presentation. It was a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure mine. Thank you so much. Thank you, so, Dr. Varghis. Oh, I really enjoyed listening to you, Sundar. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, uh, regarding uh, the COVID, uh, just uh, I know the Chinese group is trying hard to, trying uh, mm -hmm. very hard to find uh, drugs for the um, main protease in COVID, well, uh -huh. in, the, in the virus. Uh -huh. This is a protease that chops off 
uh, oh, the, uh -huh. molecules to have a functional unit. So, uh -huh. uh, I mean, but that is a uh, have been issue work. I don't know. I mean, it's going to take a long time. Yeah, that's what we don't have any because the problem is even I have a publication. I did it in the chem market, but the problem is we cannot check. Uh, I, I don't want to bring COVID-19 to my lab, right? So we can, I know. <laughs> only in one or two places we can check. So that's the very, uh, that's the problem actually. That's the limiting mm -hmm. steps. Uh, really testing the efficacy of your predicted drug is the problem. So yes, 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 yes. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. okay. Thank you. And thank you. So I have my email ID given. So any, 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 anything, any of, if anything of my help, uh, definitely uh, anybody can email students. Uh, feel free to email me. So, so uh, yeah, my email. thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So this uh, concludes uh, today's webinar. Thank you all for attending. We hope you have learned and enjoyed this presentation very well. And, uh, now I humbly invite Dr. Sareen Sarajon, ma'am, uh, faculty coordinator, UC College, for the word of thanks. This is participants and all the faculty members. On behalf of Union Christian College and the organization, I take the opportunity to propose word of thanks to those who have uh, directly and indirectly contributed to the seminar on molecular dynamic simulations in computer-aided drug discovery. So at the outset, I thank our chief guest and resource person, Dr. Meenakshi Sundaram Balasubramanya. We are really enlightened by, uh, with your knowledge and your presence, most of the concepts were not known to majority of us, because uh, especially the students, student batches. So the way you explained it to us was very, uh, is very flawless. So we, we, again and again, we are congratulating you on your excellent webinar session. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us today uh, and giving us uh, valuable interactions and all. Everything was so perfect from your side and thank you so much, sir. And we are thankful to our beloved manager, Reverend Father Thomas John, for blessing us uh, with his presence and taking out his valuable time in spite of his busy schedule. And even uh, he is a strong pillar for every activities related to the department. Thank you, Father. And I would like to thank our principal, Dr. David Sice Matthew, for being with us today and for his enthusiastic support in all our endeavors. Thank you, sir. And I am immensely thankful to all the members of UCANA, especially to Dr. I. Pergis for arranging a perfect resource person and for providing valuable suggestion for the proper conduct of this webinar. Thank you, sir. Uh, no event can be successful without people who dedicate their resources and make sure everything is faultless. We have been fortunate enough to be back and motivated by Dr. Susan Epen, our adjunct faculty in all our academic activities. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to extend a special thanks to our head of the department, Shyam sir, for his constant encouragement and support in making this webinar a great success. Thank you, sir. A special thanks to all the teachers and non-teaching staff of the college and biosciences department. Thank you all. And I would also congratulate the uh, and thank the student coordinators for their unflinching support and coordination to make this webinar a successful one. A heartfelt thanks to the active participation of our new batch of degree students who joined last week only for their graduate course. Thank you, dear students. Last but not the least, I thank all the participants for their active participation in this webinar. With these words, I will, I'm moving to the end of today's webinar. See you all on November 7th at 10.30 a.m for the next webinar on the novel topic, CRISPR-Cas9 based genome manipulation as revolutionary tool for modern biology by Dr. Devashi Shrath, group leader, CRISPR biology group, Home, uh, Baba Atomic Research Center, Mumbai. Thank you one man and all, expecting you for the next webinar also. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody.